Hey guys, I don't think we need an intro this time. We've spent the past weeks with way too much relationship drama and we've got literally nowhere with the paranormal career. So it's time to focus on Lucas because he's our current best candidate to become a cult leader unless Jessica scares him to death first. Seriously, what's wrong with her tonight? Tosha was only teaching little Oliver. Okay, fine, you scared Josh too, your list is complete, now you can go rest in peace. Finally! So, I mentioned last time that there will be another rule, which will be the pair of the previous one in a certain way. Last week the food situation got worse, because all the food that used to be there was consumed or simply spoiled, so they can only find very limited amount, even if they are experienced. And here comes the change! So far, they were using food to lure the attacking zombies away from the camp instead of fighting them, which can be risky if they lose. So this was the part when we just throw out the food when a zombie came by. And this was a safe method, but by now they got used to zombies a bit more and they are brave enough to fight them back when they decide to attack the camp, so they don't have to waste precious supplies on them. Josh has a maxed out body skill, so they are very safe until he's around, but he's an adder. Also the same rule applies here, if they lose the fight, their life depends on how skilled the doctor is. And it looks like this is going to be a busy day for Josh defending the camp. I wonder if he can hold on. Well, I guess the grave was struck by lightning once again. Oh wait, Ethan is still around? I wanted to turn him ages ago. I only kept him so Josh can see his ghost, but I guess I completely forgot about him. And I still have to wait because someone just stole our newspaper. Oh my god, this ghost situation is getting out of hand. Wait, even Kobe is here. And in case you wondered, zombies are attacking too. Um, I'm starting to have bad feelings about this night. Jesus, Kobe, you're killing him! What? This is an organized assault against Lucas. It's not fair to scare him three times in a row. Quickly grab something. Tosha, get out of the way. Um, let's eat uh, um, breakfast. Oh my god, no, please, please don't faint. Wake up, eat something. Oh no. Well, finally we can say that Ethan came back from the grave to take revenge for his murder. But at least the newspaper is here, so I can move them out. I'm so, so sorry, Lucas. What the heck? Did you just steal the paper out of his hands? Well, they are not moving out today. Come on, kid. It's important to learn how to handle poopy situations. Wait a second. Can they die again? I mean, I know they can, so I'm not sure why I'm so surprised. I guess I'm surprised that I'm surprised. <laughs> Okay, finally they can move out. Tosha wants a baby and she just arrived home with Adam. Coincidence? I think not. Let's make him selectable for a bit. He wants to fall back in love with Tosha so we can work on that while I carefully send Josh hiking. Oh my god, wh what's wrong with him? Oh, he's having a heat stroke. Anyway, this is a perfect occasion to cheat on him while he's passed out. Oh, and Adam brought the engagement fear, which is Amelia's one, if you remember from last week. Emilia wants a relative to get engaged. I feel like she just wants Adam to suffer. But I thought this would happen with him and Cameron. Oh, don't worry, Josh, you haven't missed anything, really. Apart from your wife cheating on you and getting pregnant once again from her lover. What? You know, this is not the first time, and after heat stroke, he's even less forgiving. But Tosha refuses to leave the camp. Instead, she decides to unite her remaining son with his father, so Adam moves in. From his point of view, one and a half kid is still better than having three with Cameron in the other camp. The only issue is that he can only dream of having such a good relationship with his son as Josh built with him in the past weeks. Really? We've just got a new genie lamp! Alright, every adult can make a wish. But Josh is quite balanced, so I'm not sure what to wish for. Oh wait! We can resurrect Kobe? Yes, that's exactly what I would wish for. Oh hi Kobe! I'm so happy that once again we found a way to get her back. Life is so boring without her. And she's the best zombie alert system. Next up, Tosha. She's been through a lot recently. Unwanted pregnancy, relationship problems, losing her son from Josh, divorce. Not even her new marriage could make her happy. So now she really deserves some peace of mind. And Adam is quite similar. He's been forced into these unwanted commitments and the problem of raising kids and all the responsibility. It must be hard to live in a world like this for such a free-spirited person. And that's a nice way of saying that he's a hoe. You know what? Now that Kobe is alive and Josh has some advanced painting skills, we should paint a portrait of her. Yeah, something like that, with Oliver. 
Okay, Adam, he moved in. Now it's your turn to defend the camp. That went surprisingly well with his two body points. I know, stop messing with the fridge. We have to wait for Josh to get back home because he's the most killed. Alright, at least we don't have zombies, but again, the limit is reduced to 300 and he has 11 scavenge points, so the result is... 231. Not much. Wait a second. He's normal looking. Let's name him... Mike. Like, Magic Mike. But not because I want him to be a stripper, but because he's magically normal looking. Alright, perfect ending for this not so perfect episode. But don't worry about losing Lucas. The only thing that matters is that Kobe is back once again and her portrait is also on the way. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!